Topper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Ollum. Welcome back to our next segment of Inside Hilltopper Athletics Football Edition. I'm Lynn Ollum, Director of Athletics, sitting here with Coach Wiley. Coach, let's talk a little bit about uh, the game last week. We opened up at Walsh, not the result that uh, we would have liked to have had, but as always, let's just start with your thoughts on the game. Well, you know, there was five major components, you know, for or five major segments of time that hurt us the first eight minutes for some reason we were stuck in the mud then we got going um but you know no one play loses the game but the combination of those five five separate plays you know and the most of them were at four of them were on special teams and one of them offensively led to our demise you know i don't think they did anything extremely to us we had some mental breakdowns we physically missed a couple kicks and we give them a free three before half because we didn't keep our composure uh, we misread a coverage and led to a pick six but you know i'm glad the way the kids responded being 20 down 24 nothing at one time and then coming all the way back and giving them a chance to complete the task but you can't in college football you can't give anybody any extra opportunities and that's what we've talked about that's what we've preached over the last few years is we got to take care of our own business and things will happen our way well i'll take the blame for special teams because we used to refer to it as our former sid the don clegg jinx mm -hmm. of course my theme last week mm -hmm. was special teams the unsung yeah, heroes at points of course we brought Teresa gretchen on our producer to to further illustrate that point. So let's even displace the blame. I'm not going to take the blame for it. I'm going to blame it on Teresa. <laughs> well, she moved us outside. She knows I'm superstitious. We should be inside in the same direction, not facing the hallway. So we're undefeated that way. <laughs> but you were correct. Um, kind of a tale of two halves. We, we did find ourselves down. Um, moved the ball a little in the first half, just didn't have points to show for it. Uh, it did reach a point on 24 nothing, and to make it even crazier, it almost appeared it was going to go to third. We dug in, got a stop. They missed the field goal, and then, wow, the game just kind of changed. So talk a little bit. How did it change? What were we doing better at that point to make it happen? Well, I think, number one, defensively, we started tackling a lot better. You know, our tackling was really bad in the first half. And I think you look at a lot of the plays where they had big plays, it was just more missed tackles than anything else. Uh, offensively, Rudy kind of got in the rhythm. We hit some deep balls. We were able to spread them out. Really disappointed um, in the run game. But if you look at it, go back, look on film, that's the one thing they weren't going to let us do is run the ball. They outmanned us in the box. We're not, you know, normally we don't throw the ball 60 times, 59 times in a game. But it got to the point, are you going to try to win the game or are you going to try to establish something for the season? And I said, we're going to go try to win it. And so we just continued. We got into our two-minute offense early in the fourth quarter. And, you know, maybe we should just run two minutes the whole game. <laughs> Well, we definitely started making plays. Uh, you referenced 59 throws, and there's not a lot of games in school history. If, if I would have done a little bit better job of my homework, I would have found out where that stands on the all-time list. But, but you are right. When you're down, it kind of does eliminate the run, and that's why I don't get too caught up on stats can be taken out of context. So if you're going to look at overall rushing yards, when you're down, you almost have to abandon the run. But boy, did it work. We started uh, making plays. Uh, talk about a little bit of the individual performances. Uh, start with the quarterback play. Well, I thought other than one play, it was excellent. You know, he was going through his reads. And when he saw stuff, he checked to it. Um, he got us out of some bad situations and run calls and so forth. Our communication was a little bit bad. There's times where when he was changing the play, we didn't get it outside with the receivers, and, you know, we have to work to correct, to correct that. So 
quarterback play I thought was really good. We can win a lot of games if he plays that way. Uh, two receivers over 100 yards. Talk a little bit about the receiving core. Yeah, with the, well, I, Chris Charles, you know, only had five receptions, but there were big plays down the field, which we haven't had a couple easy ones. We got a couple easy ones, from, you know, during that game. And then uh, Rayshon Harvey had a great game, 14 catches, 168 yards. And so, but we knew last week the strength of our team does lie in the receiving core. They are really deep. And, you know, if you look at the number of receivers, and there's still a couple that will surface. Yeah, I, and one thing that I always look for is catches that don't maybe show up in TD catches, but there were some hand catches of balls that I thought were really impressive in that game. Right. We were able to be – and we were aggressive to the ball. We didn't wait for the ball to come to us. We attacked the football, and that's when you can catch it in your hands and eliminate some of the hits that you would take. If you're stationary and you're catching the ball, uh, especially coming back to the quarterback, that's when you suffer a lot of hits. But I thought we were patient. We were able to throw it underneath when they rolled up. We were able to get some easy ones uh, designed. But it's like the last touchdown – he looked up, he saw the coverage. They played the same coverage they got the pick six on. So he knew what to check to. He checked to the double move. We ran a slant, a sluggo route, a slant and a go. And he was wide open and raced down the sideline. So, you know, those things we got to notice earlier in the game if they changed something. So now just a, a really good job um, by, by Rudy. The offensive line I thought pass blocked pretty well because they were running a lot of different stuff for us. We had to start a true freshman at center, uh, Mason Fraley, um, that, you know, Creech has played center in the middle of the game. He goes, Coach, he goes, I can't believe all the stuff they're throwing at him, and he's getting most of it right, making the checks, getting the line going the right way. So, you know, a lot of things, the biggest negative is we lost the game, but there was more positives that came out for the future for us. What about, uh, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball pretty much uh, dominated the game in the second half. Yeah, really, really tackled well in the second half, ran to the ball. This is one of the few we noticed early that this group plays hard no matter what. Um, but we got a lot of good play out of, you know, the freshman corner comes to mind. He made some great plays defensively. Uh, you look up front, the front four played hard, and they probably the most plays are front four has played probably in my tenure. We're used to playing eight to 12 guys up there, and we were stuck with eight because of injuries. And so that was really seeing them get through the whole game somewhat healthy. Um, hopefully the reinforcements are getting healthy enough to play because we want to get back up to playing eight to 10. But, you know, you look at Cam Rice's performance, uh, um, John Brown's performance in there. They really, really did a good job, and I know I'm leaving out a couple more. Carson Moore got his first extended action since he's been here two years on the knee rehab. Uh, DeAndre Horsley made wreaked havoc. He showed that he can get off the edge, and he's one of the elite pass rushers we've had here. So, you know, a lot, a lot of good things happen. All right, well, let's go to break, and when we come back, we'll talk about this week's opponent. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Allum. Welcome back to our last segment of this week's edition of Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Coach, uh, Thursday night game, which I kind of like. I enjoy the Thursday night games. I think uh, when the lights come on and with the backdrop here, we have one of the more beautiful stadiums in the country. And I kind of like that Thursday night atmosphere, but let's talk about our opponent. What do we know about Fairmont? Well, Fairmont returns, you know, t two years of uh, Floria, the quarterback. He started as a true freshman, started last year, got hurt in our game, didn't finish the season, so he had a good game the first game. 
uh, whereas Fairmont Thrive than the first game against Blues, Bloomsburg was special teams wise. So it's a big challenge for our special teams. But if you look at them offensively, they return him, uh, one wide receiver, and then they return their whole five starting offensive lines. So, you know, whenever you have that experience that up front, you're going to be dangerous. Defensively is where most of their premier starters, Brockton, who was freshman of the year a couple years ago, uh, an inside backer, and then their other linebacker started as a true freshman last year. They have tall, rangy corners, meaning last week they started two corners that were 6'3", which is unheard of on our level. So, you know, we're – I think this conference is going to be the same as last year. Everything's going to be so evenly matched that you're going to have to play week in and week out. There's not going to be any easy victories. Well, Fairmont, it is a rivalry game. Correct. For sure. Not a lot of love lost between the two institutions and most sports. Mm. Um, They did win week one at Bloomsville, scored late in the game. Right. Put up 30-plus points. Um what type of offense will we see out of them? Well, they've kind of done a little bit what we've done. They've been in the last three years. They were strictly in the gun. Now they've gone back under center. Uh, they, you know, run RPOs on second and medium and so forth. But I think they're in search. They're tailback left and got in a transfer portal. They played three kids that I thought ran the ball extremely well. Um, so offensively, they're going to try to spread you out. If they can't spread you out, they're going to try to load the box. But he, they're looking to run the football first and then try to hit you with a big play when you start coming up or get on play action. So uh, they did run the quarterback a little more than they have in the past with some design runs. So I am imagine that we'll see some of those with us. What us. about uh, what will we see on the defensive side? Well, defensively, you know, Bloomsburg runs such a different offense. I don't know if they can play us the same way. You know, Bloomsburg runs a lot of unbalance, a lot of different things with the tight end. They're a traditional set, meaning they play with a tight end, fullback, and two wide receivers probably 80% of the time. So they played us, They played them a little differently. I'd imagine with us they're going to try to play us man-to-man first, cover one and try to stop us that way, and if not, jump into some zones. Uh, They did blitz quite a bit against uh, Bloomsburg, but there were more run blitzes than pass blitzes. Let's talk about playing on Thursday night. I know we we revisit this time to time. Thoughts on Thursday night? I love the home Thursday night games because then we're done, we can go home. The way Thursday night games, when you're getting (laughs) home at 2 in the morning, that's not good. So if they all could be at home, I'd play every one of them on Thursday night. But the away ones, I don't want to play any Thursday night games. Maybe I could have a talk with the commissioner (laughs) and see if we could get all home games. You're right. We'd all be in favor of that. But Well, thank you for uh, tuning in. This is going to wrap up this week's uh, Inside Hilltopper Athletics Edition. Uh, Coach, good luck. Let's, uh, Let's get one on Thursday night. Yes, thank you. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Hi, my name is Craig Bober. I'm a senior finance major at West Liberty University. And today I'm gonna be showing you what it's like to be a part of this program. Heading to my first class of the day, Investment Portfolio Analysis with Professor Jesse. Uh, We're going to start off doing some current events and then we're going to look at evaluating some stocks, figuring out the intrinsic value. We're going to do Knight, Tyson, Disney, and Waste Management. Uh, We need to make some investments with the Investment Club. The finance program at West Liberty is an exceptional experience. In the program, there are amazing teachers that always make class fun and engaging. A new student enrolling in the program should expect a personable learning experience when you're engaging in classroom activities and building relationships with your teachers and classmates. I chose the major in finance because of my interest in the finance world and my want to pursue a career in business. Uh, My goals after graduating are to become a certified financial planner and help people achieve their retirement and savings goals. 
heading to my second class of the day, Management Capstone with Dr. Rocchio. So part of what we've been doing over the last several weeks was looking at the internal and external factors of the companies that you had chosen to research. This major is good for others to consider because of the quality of education you receive and the relationships you build with the people in the business department. Uh, professionally with a finance degree, you have many different career options like banking, insurance, financial planning, or even tax services. I chose West Liberty University because I did not want to go far from home, but I still wanted to be away. Personally, what I like most about West Liberty is the great people that live here. West Liberty Business Program attracts many people from different countries, so this provides you with a unique and diverse learning environment being here. Be heading into the investment club meeting. Uh, so, as we talked about, here's our current uh, portfolio allocation. Um, so, we still have about $5,000 left, so we need to make some investments. The investment club is a student ran club that is sponsored by West Banco, where we use real money to buy stocks and bonds to build a class portfolio. Uh, this club is a great place to learn about the stock market and how investing works. All the decisions that we make regarding our portfolio are voted on by all the members of the club. Now for my last class of the day, my finance capstone with Professor Jesse. West Liberty's finance capstone is unique because it is a CFP board registered program, which is something that not all colleges offer. Uh, in this course, we learn about topics like ethics, retirement planning, tax planning, and risk management, which prepares us for the CFP exam. And now we're going to cap off the day with playing some basketball with my friends. Being a student athlete, there are many challenges that come with it, but the rewards far outweigh them. Uh, through my four years of playing football here, I learned many valuable life skills and have built friendships that will last a lifetime. Thanks for coming along with me today, and for more information, just visit our website. Welcome to this Mountain East Conference Digital Network production on Topper Station. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Main Street Bank, Chick-fil-A, Dr. and Mrs. John P. McCullough, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration, Dr. and Mrs. Clyde Campbell, Belmont Savings Bank, Alex E. Paris Contracting, Commonwealth Financial, IBEW, Cowcruth Roofing and Sheet Metal, Undos, Gil Ullum CPA, Generations, WVU Medicine Wheeling Hospital, The Store, The Dirty Dog Tavern, Karen Ullum Realty, The Health Plan, Comfort Maker, Moundsville Pharmacy, Whipkey Cattle Ranch, and Cameron Lumber. We are live from West Family Stadium in beautiful West Liberty, West Virginia. Tonight is the 2023 home opener for Hilltopper football as they take on big time rival Fairmont State. Uh, Coach, uh, it's been a good week so far uh, for the toppers. It's always fun to see what happens between week one and week two. That say They say that's where the biggest growth is. Last week, the toppers uh, had a comeback bid fall a little bit short, but uh, left Topper Nation with a lot of optimism as we move forward. Right. They just got out of the gate so slowly, found themselves down 24 nothing, and then made a furious rally. So I don't think there's any moral victories or anything like that, but it showed once they got focused, this team can score points. Absolutely can. It was fun to see that second half and the Toppers' offense and defense come together, and it seemed like they were just kind of battling the clock towards the end of the game and just came up just shy. Fairmont State, on the other hand, uh, had a big win against Bloomsburg. They start off the season 1-0 as we take a look at the Mountain East Conference standings. Um, 
Charleston, Fairmont State, Frostburg State, Glenville State, Notre Dame, uh, UNC Pembroke, and Wheeling all 1-0. Concord, West Liberty, West Virginia State, and West Virginia Wesleyan all 0-1 to start the season. The toppers will try to get to 500 and make Fairmont 500 as well as uh, this game gets going. We take a look at the matchup. Uh, the toppers in that first game able to accumulate four, over 400 yards uh, of offense, third in the Mountain East, but 374 yards through the air. That's number one in the conference. Right, once you get down, which they did, uh, West Liberty threw the ball 59 times in the game, 36 completions. But once they got in rhythm, it was pretty impressive, but a little bit too late, and I didn't mention the defense on the lead in. The defense played well in the first half, too. They just needed that help from the offense, and again, just a little bit too late. And for Fairmont State, a little bit more evenly paced through the air and on the ground. Uh, they had 324 yards total of offense, uh, sixth in the MEC, 168 yards on the ground. That's good for third in the conference so far this season. And the topper defense will have to, again, step up big here tonight. Well, very mobile quarterback who, who really impressed me in a game two years ago um, here on this field. It's going to be, and you mentioned that football world, biggest improvement week one to two. I've always said what makes this sport unique, you never know what you're going to get in week one. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's always my concern. And, boy, what a tale of two halves last week. And, and give Fairmont credit. They, things were looking dire for them. They got the ball back, marched the length of the field, scored with little time left, like nine seconds left, and, and pulled out a big win. I watched your show this week with Coach Wiley. He spoke a little bit about uh, Fairmont's ability on the special teams to do well, and that was a big reason they won against Bloomsburg. Um, that'll be an interesting thing to watch here tonight as well, see how much of an impact that will have, especially with these teams knowing each other so well over the years. Special teams may have a pretty big uh, part in this one because they know each other's schemes. Well, that was probably one of the biggest disappointments in week one, and I'm not even talking specific individuals, but in that podcast we had talked extensively about special teams, and West Liberty missed a couple field goals, gave up a huge kick return to start the game, so I'm sure that's been a focus the entire week. How can we get that straightened out? Because we know Fairmont excelled on special teams in week one. Well, we will take a quick, quick break here, and we will come back with more in the Main Street Bank kickoff here on the Mountain East Conference Network on Topper Station. What if your bank offers CDs with consistently competitive and higher interest rates? That's what I want. What if, unlike other banks, they're normally open more hours? And they don't use high teaser rates on CDs only to lower them later. Isn't that the way all banks should be? And even more, several of their CD accounts have some of the best interest rates. That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your CD account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot and your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company. You want to plan with people you know, like the health plan known for exceptional local customer service and are headquartered right here in West Virginia. We are families, we are businesses, and we are all moving forward together. We are here for you, The Health Plan. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference.
big thank you to the Hilltopper Marching Band, but this week a somber mood at West Liberty is a great benefactor of West Liberty and a great help to many people here at West Liberty University. Um, passed away earlier this week, Gary West, and we will have a moment of silence here at West Family Stadium. As the PA is reading a little bio on him, you can see the flag is at half mast um, to recognize Gary and his contributions to our institution in so many ways. And what a beautiful stadium that we're in, courtesy of, of Gary. Thank you. And again, a somber mood, and I'm sure Mr. West would not want it to be that way on a football night. He would want everybody to be happy and ready to go, but uh, I never got to meet the man, but he had done a lot of things that indirectly helped me out, whether it be calling games in this booth or uh, other places as well. Uh, I was a benefactor of a lot of things that he did and his generosity for sure. Yeah, absolutely, and he actually had plans to be here tonight they were going to fly up and and he was going to be at the game and then uh, he took a turn for the worst earlier in the week and um, even the bio which is incredibly impressive that doesn't do it justice meaning Gary meant so much more than just the financial support that he and Flip has given West Liberty over the years and uh, just a true passionate lover of the school proud alum uh, demonstrated it in so many ways and uh, this stadium has his names on it and um, he would be very very pleased to be here see the turnout and he would be cheering the toppers on absolutely would and as we get ready for the Main Street Bank kickoff and the beginning of the Chick-fil-a first quarter the toppers will kick his Fairmont State will receive the opening kickoff both of their returners back on the 10-yard line and on to kick for the toppers is number 35, Tyler Waddle. Todd, the one thing I, I missed, I don't know if we deferred or if Fairmont took the ball. I missed the coin flip as we were preparing for the moment of silence. Kick is a good one. Caught it about the six-yard line. Returned up to the 20. Toppers are there. Finally brought down, and a flag is on the field. The tackle for the Toppers. I believe that is number 38, Noah Sh Nolan Shimp. We'll see the flag. And Todd, while we're sorting out that penalty, which was a block in the back, uh, I personally want to welcome you back to the booth. Uh, you and I have done a few games in our time, and it's a great pleasure to have you back. I enjoy working with you. Oh, it's good to be back on the hilltop wearing black and gold. Feels good, a graduate of here. It's always good to see the toppers play, and now that I get to be a part of it as well, I'm more than happy. Topper defense out there is Fairmont showed a empty backfield, but now I'll go to a single back, two receivers up top. Floria. Hands this ball off. Toppers almost there. Another flag in the backfield. This one will be coming back. Appears uh, a hold back there, which will back the Falcons up even more. But as we're waiting on the referee, let's see if I can get this. So a uh, holding penalty. But um, in our podcast this week with Coach Wiley, one of the biggest disappointments for him in the first half of last week was Hilltopper tackling. He thought they got way better at that in the second half, but gave up a couple chunk plays there um, early in the game. But uh, tackling is always key, especially at the beginning of seasons. Floria 
on his goal line, fires this one. Pass incomplete. They say it bounced off the ground. Fairmont trying to plead their case, saying it was a catch, but the officials say no, and it goes to back to second and long. And this is where you want to be as a defense. You get people behind the chains bottled up in their own end, and last year West Liberty was so good at forcing turnovers for about probably the first 80% of the season. Didn't force any last week, but these are the type of situations that you try to take advantage of. Coach Monteroso, defensive coordinator, trying to get something good going for the toppers here. Floria in the end zone. Drops back, looks, steps up. He's in trouble. He gets sacked for the safety. Toppers take an early lead. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not a turnover, but it's a safety, and it's as good as a turnover. And West Liberty takes the lead. How about that to start the game? West Family Stadium very happy right now, at least a little bit more than half the crowd very happy with that. See a smattering of Fairmont State fans, but the topper sideline. What a better way to start a game. And if you're the Fairmont coaching staff, you're, you're not happy to start the game with uh, two penalties and then you give up the sack. And Todd, I don't know if we had a chance to, to mention for the viewers out there, especially ones that don't live in our area, at about 5 o'clock today, we had hurricane winds and rain. It was a driving rainstorm. And I don't know if we got a shot of the sky view, or at least the treetops here on w West Liberty, but boy, does it look beautiful now. Yeah, it's a uh, great temperature for a football game, and and we had three uh, three weather delays. That's the reason that we got a late kickoff here today. Uh, three times they had to to restart that thirty minute uh, thirty minute delay. Oh, well, because of the safety, it'll be a free kick for Fairmont State. Looks like it'll be Scout Arthur, the punter number twenty-six. He gets the go-ahead from his teammates. And not a great kick. This will be at midfield. Bounces. Almost got in. Fairmont State comes up with it. And because the punter was out there not sure what's going on special teams, uh, it was a live ball and Fairmont State gets possession. Wow, you talk about emotions changing immediately and it almost appears that... Uh, the receiver there for West Liberty didn't know the rules. Yep. Uh, again, with the punter out there, instead of the ball being on a tee and having the place kicker out there, maybe somebody just kind of got startled there. Now we have a huddle with the officials to figure out what's going on. It looked like Coach Wiley had a question as the team was coming back to the sideline. Maybe I don't know the rules, but I've never seen this. No. Neither have I. I thought I've watched a lot of football in my life, but I've never seen this. So it will be Fairmont's football. Well, 2 nothing, and the toppers have yet to have the ball on offense. Florida. Todd, I've watched literally thousands of football <laughs> games because I'm old. I have never seen that happen. No, neither have I. Well, Fairmont back out in a shotgun. Floria out there with Derek Crosby the third. Gloria looks down the field, finds somebody in the seam, but it's over the head of everyone. Incomplete pass. Looked like a little bit of incidental contact there in the secondary. A receiver went down for Fairmont, but no call. I think that was Reed Amos, the commissioner of the Mountain East Conference, throwing a football <laughs> to one of the judges out there. He used to be up in this booth with you. Oh, yeah, we... Some of the better moments in uh, my sporting life being, <laughs> being here at West Liberty is I thoroughly enjoyed, did a lot of football games with, with Mr. Amos. And, and great glad ones. Glad to have him back. Great teams here at West Liberty back in those days. Floria dropping back again. Pressure fires it, though, and incomplete. Two defenders for West Liberty right there. Mason Gates and number one, Brennan Bailey. Great job by the topper defense. Bring up third down and ten. 
And if the toppers can get another quick three and out here, I guess the last time it ended in a safety, but they'll take another quick defensive possession. Has there ever been a 55-yard safety? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a 4 nothing lead. Two two-run homers. Floria going to fake this and hand it off for the little draw. Is it enough for the first down? It's going to be very close. That looks like this may have to be a measurement. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Okay. It will be a nice run on third and ten. The draw works. And and the call doesn't surprise me. And I think this kid's got some talent. But he struggled last week. He was 11 for 30 in the air. And I believe on the last drive, he was 5 for 5. Yep. So he was 6 for 25 before they got the ball back. And he, He's got some experience. His third year starting. He's going to hand this one off up the middle. Three toppers there to help with the tackle, but a decent gain of three. Bring up second down and seven. I had an opportunity to meet Fairmont's uh, new president. They have a new president as well. Spent some time with him, and I was telling him our rivalry with Fairmont across almost all of our sports has gotten pretty significant. <laughs> I mean, it, there's not a lot of love lost, and I don't mean that in a dirty way, but there's not a lot of love lost between these institutions on the playing fields. It's a nice competitive rivalry. Respectful disliking. Pistol formation. Floria hands it off. Crosby gets about another three yards. We'll call it third down and four coming up. That's a good open field tackle there by the Hilltopper defense. It looked like he had a sliver of, of room there, but uh, closed on the ball quickly and made a good secure tackle. Well, two to nothing so far in this Chick-fil-A first quarter. A big third down here for the topper defense. Could have been a false start. Flag is thrown, whistle blown. And it will be a false start. That'll make it third and nine for the Falcons. And again, behind the chains, a chance for the West Liberty defense to maybe step up and make a big play. Toppers make some adjustments on the defense personnel-wise because of the situation now third and long. Twelve minutes left to play in this Chick-fil-A first quarter. Gloria sends the man in motion. Looks downfield, fires left side, pass is caught and completed. He will be very close to a first down again. They're going to give it to him first down for Fairmont State. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good throw and catch there. Got the ball out of his hands quickly on the break, and receiver made a – he was close to the sideline. That was a nice catch. Completion there on the timing pattern for Floria. He's got two sidecars with him this time. He's going to hand it off. No, he's going to keep it himself. Almost a good fake, but two toppers not fooled at all. It was Trent Crawford and Briandre Horsley. You know, Todd, here's something that's relatively new to the game, and I don't know how much you had to experience, but uniforms got incredibly hard to read with the numbers to the point that they legislated that out <laughs> about a year ago. Uh, they were even threatening, if you don't change your uniform, it's a 15-yard penalty to start the game. Yeah. I, everybody was wearing too much gray. That was my opinion. Everybody had a gray uniform now. It was weird. Floria looking left, fires it. Good tackle, but a nice gain as well. We'll bring up third down. And about five. Another good job of getting the quarterback, getting the ball out of his hands. Nice catch, but West Liberty with a short tackle there and kept it to a small gain and another big third down here. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Woodman and his staff wants to get his quarterback a little comfortable, get him some quick throws, somewhat high percentage passes, get him into the flow of the game. 
Just under 10 minutes left in this Chick-fil-A first quarter. Floria fakes the handoff, passes it. It's going to be into the end zone and a touchdown for Fairmont State's Derek Crosby the third. Well, that's what happens when you give up the, the big turnover on the free kick and give Fairmont credit. They took advantage of it, put together a pretty impressive drive there, converted I think at least three third downs on that drive, and they find a way into the end zone. Well, Fairmont State on for the extra point. Emmanuel Richardson, a redshirt freshman, 5'11", 190, on to kick. Scout Arthur, the punter, will hold. The kick is up and good. That will make the score 7-2 with 9.43 left in the Chick-fil-A first quarter. And we will take a quick break and be right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. Hi, I'm Heather, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite, it's the second or the third, with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. You shouldn't pay maintenance fees or be required to have a minimum balance in your checking account. And if you use an ATM and have to pay a fee, your bank should pay you back for that. But that's what you get with Casasa Cash, only at Belmont Savings Bank. The region's largest restoration firm, responding from five locations. When disaster strikes your home or business, call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. It pays for my master's degree. I can't believe that this happened. It's just a pivotal, life-changing moment. Welcome back to West Family Stadium. 9.43 left in the Chick-fil-A first quarter. Toppers down by 5, 7-2. to two. The defense uh, did well as Fairmont State took the... Main Street Bank opening kickoff, and the topper defense held them big time and forced a safety, and then on the ensuing free kick, uh, the toppers just let the ball go, thinking they could fair catch or somebody was going to get it, but Fairmont ended up coming up with it, took possession, and drove down the field, converting some key third downs before getting a touchdown. You know, and even getting back to that free kick, because the free kick was shanked, it's an up guy that normally doesn't field kicks, and I think he was just, do I field it, do I not field it? And, of course, then it was too late. But, again, Fairmont very opportunistic and uh, took advantage of it. And the Hilltoppers find themselves down uh, five here with 9.43 left in the first quarter. Now i got a feeling this will be something that special teams coaches will go over after seeing that. Back deep for the toppers. Take a look, a line drive kick received. It's taken by Joshua Clark. He gets some room up to the 45 or close to it, maybe the 44, but good starting position for the toppers. The key to that return, I believe, was him catching the ball out of the air with his hands. You know, you're not catching it with your stomach and then you got to pull it up to to take that first stride he caught it with his hands and great read and that's a quality kick return out to the 35. Yeah I'll correct myself 35 not 45 sorry for the folks at home watching it's it's been a while since I've caught a football game we're getting back into it Rudy Garcia out there for West Liberty Play action quickly, wide receiver screen, and a good gain here for the toppers on their first offensive play of the ball game. Something that they did a really good job of last week is, are those quick outs and uh, great blocking there on the perimeter. Rashawn Harvey with the reception on that one. He had a big day last week. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a short loss. Make it third and two. The Hilltoppers struggled mightily to run the football last week, but 
in fairness, not a lot of opportunities. You get down 24 nothing, and that's pretty much going to eliminate the run game, including with the new clock timing rules this year Absolutely. where the clock does not stop to reset the chains, and it just shortens the game a little bit. Big third down. Garcia keeps it. Nice little pass out on the RPO. And a first down. Great job for the tight end, Jesse Collins, redshirt junior. Well, the reason I like that not only was he caught the ball and got upfield and got the first down, but he's the one that sealed the perimeter there on that quick out, which enabled uh, the Hilltoppers to pick up eight yards on that first play. Garcia picking up where he left off last week, having a good game so far through the air. Hands it off up the middle. Trying to keep Fairmont's defense honest. A gain of one, second down and nine. Nice crowd here on a weather cooperating Thursday <laughs> night after the torrential downpour two hours before kickoff. But, uh, and I like Thursday night football games. I've verbalized that a lot since the MEC went to that several years ago. Garcia is going to keep this, fires it, bounced around and almost, but now a flag. Are they going to call pass interference? Looks like they will. That'll go against Isaiah Powell Major, a redshirt sophomore corner for Fairmont. I believe that's a spot foul, but a first down, right? Wait for the officials' call, and the officials out there, referee Michael Jarosinski, umpire Jeffrey. Well, fooled us all. <laughs> Illegal man downfield on the toppers. On those RPOs, that can be tricky. With Liberty now behind the chains. Second and 15, 14. Garcia looking down the middle of the field. Pass is tipped. Was intended for Christian Banks. Tipped away by Brockton Blair. Bring up third down and 14 from the 45. So West Liberty faces their... Second, third down, potential conversion here, but not the down and distance you like in this situation. Garcia has trips to one side, a single receiver and a sidecar, drops back, feels the pressure, fires it, a flag in the backfield. It looks like it might have been a chop block maybe. So the punt team will come on for the toppers after Fairmont declines the holding call. Out to kick for West Liberty, Matt Curry. And back to return is Kobe Harris for Fairmont State. Seven twenty remaining in this Chick-fil-A first quarter. Curry gets this one off just in time and a good kick too. Good coverage down there for the toppers. 